Welcome to the Boschman Team Seller Series, where we talk about the steps that go into selling a home in Manitoba. Welcome to the Boschman Team's Home Seller Series. I'm Denise Young, and today I have Rhett Boschman with me to talk about what happens once you have your house on the market. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Denise. Thanks for joining us, Rhett. So what happens when we put a house on the market? What do we want our clients to know? Yeah, and that's, uh, that's a big question because, you know, it's a stressful time for the clients and we want to make it as easy as possible for them to make this process go along smoothly for both sides. Right. And at, up to now, they've probably put in a lot of work getting their house ready to put on the market. Um, so one of the things I like to talk about probably before I've <laughs> listed their house, uh, but affects this time is to possibly move out for a little while, uh, if possible, move to the lake or uh, grandma's house <laughs> or something like that, especially if they do have kids or pets, because it uh, can be uh, a lot of extra cleaning in between showings, because showings don't happen just between four and seven, they happen at 10 a.m. <laughs> they can happen at 1, 1 p.m. They can happen. And if you go home every time after a showing, now the house has to be cleaned every time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you're tailoring to a bunch of other people as well because people have different work schedules. Sometimes they can't make it during the day. They have, need evenings. So then if you, if you move out, then you're appealing to the masses and hoping to get the most eyes on your, on your property. Exactly. And, and we do have a lot of shift workers. And so there are a lot of daytime showings too. So I like to chat about that um, because, you know, some, some people are working from home nowadays. So if you're working from home and listing your house, um, what does that look like? What, what is your availability to allow appointments when you're going to be working possibly in meetings <laughs> on teams, you know, from like 8 AM to 4 PM do you, is your schedule flexible enough to allow a showing at 1 p.m.? Because, you know, there are a lot of shift workers out there that can't come between like four and eight, right? So we want to maximize that. So it's good to have those conversations before we have that house listed. But um, we're talking about it now because it's uh, <laughs> going to affect this time. So, for sure, for uh, sure. yeah. So, um, what else should uh, people know about uh, this time uh, when once their house is on the market? Um, I think one thing that's probably important for them is to keep a checklist of things that they can go through the house and uh, make sure that the house is looking the same for each of the showings and keeping that consistent, consistent look. Exactly, exactly. And as their realtors, we can make that checklist for them. But... Um, yeah, it's, it's important to make sure that the house is show worthy every time, uh, for sure. And it's also important that people leave the house for showings. Because um, a, a house that has the seller still in it is a lot harder for buyers to feel comfortable in. And it's harder for them to get that feeling that they could live there, right? Um, so I always recommend leaving the house for showings. It's a little harder when you have tenants because the tenants don't have to leave. But um, but it, when it's your house and it's your showings and you're the one that wants to benefit from the sale, definitely leave the house mm -hmm. uh, for the showings. Um, it, it just makes the, the buyers feel more comfortable. And uh, they, they can also chit chat about the pros and cons of things as they're walking through the house when you're not there. Um, yeah. Also... Uh, make sure you're taking your pets with you. Yeah, that's another big thing because it's not only for the safety of the potential buyers, but then also for the pets themselves so that there's no risk of them getting out or them getting injured as well. Exactly, exactly. It's way less uh, stress on them as well to go for a car ride, even if they hate cars, than to have a whole bunch of strangers in their house, especially for cats who are very territorial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I, I've heard of most people taking their dogs out, but then just leaving their cats. So it's, exactly. probably, the, it's probably a good idea to take the cats along as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I, we don't want to stress out a cat. Um, some of the more, I'll say some of the, the worst case scenarios are, are like 
super stressed out cats. But the I'll say on the better side of it is they might like leave little presents here and there when they're because they're upset that you're having all these people come through their house. Um, yeah, they don't <laughs> want a buyer stepping in stepping in something that's <laughs> right, exactly. not supposed to be there. That's not supposed to be there. Yeah, been there, done that. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's it's good for both cats and dogs to be taken out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, another thing that we need to talk about all the time with our clients is keeping the house in a safe condition, which can be harder to do this time of year. We're filming this in November. Um, so um, winter can be a little harder because you know we don't have uh, control over how much it snows once we've left the house or, or whatnot, but um, to be actively keeping snow off the sidewalks, um, putting down salt or kitty litter on the sidewalks to make sure that it's not icy, um, not leaving um, uh, <laughs> crawl space hatches. <laughs> For some reason that word was like not coming to me, not leaving them wide open, especially if there's, they're like in an enclosed area. I had a, mm -hmm gentleman actually fall in one because the door wouldn't open and he's like slipped in to that room to try the door from the other side to open it better like more than a crack and he literally disappeared because he fell into the open hatch oh, no. yeah, which we weren't told would be open and was in a room right on the other side of the door yeah in a dark yeah room. Yeah, so things like that, um, making sure that things are safe uh, for buyers to be on our property. And if they can't be, if there's something that's broken, it should be noted in the in the confirmation. It should be noted on the listing. It should be there should be a note probably on the front door, <laughs> right, so that people are aware before they enter the property. Mm -hmm. Especially if that's something that isn't quite visible. Yeah. It's something that you kind of have to look around for. So, right. and if it, that's something as realtors that we know, but the clients don't know, it's better to disclose it than to Absolutely. keep it off to the wayside. Yeah. You don't want to be in the middle of a lawsuit when you're selling your house. <laughs> nope. Not, not, a, not a good plan. <laughs> no. It just had a whole bunch of stress on. Yeah. Yeah. Who um, wants more stress with their stress? I don't think anybody does. <laughs> no, exactly. Exactly. So what other things would our clients uh, need to know at this point? Um, another um, thing that they probably need to know is, is feet. Oh, were you saying something? No, go ahead. Oh, um, well, after the showings happen, there's probably a lot of feedback that comes from the clients or the potential buyers as well. And relaying that information back to the seller. Yeah. Yeah, exactly exactly yeah and then all that sometimes depending on how interested the potential buyers are they or if there's a potential offer date then they may openly say a lot more negative things about it or they may be more reserved so it's something to keep in mind and to disclose that to the seller that these reviews will definitely be all over the place but not to take it to heart especially if they know it no, yeah. especially if they know deep and in, deep inside that they know that they have a great property and yeah, and people's opinions come, they vary. Yeah, lot. exactly. People's opinions vary greatly, but if we're getting the same feedback on the same items, sometimes it is something we should look at. Like, um, I'm trying to think of one that I had recently. I'm nose blind to dog smell, right? So, because uh, I have dogs. <laughs> And so if I'm in a house and it has a smell of dog, I might not notice it. So if I keep getting someone else, uh, other agents complaining that the house smells when I don't smell it, I need to bring in a, a, a different nose <laughs> and see if, you know, because again, my clients won't smell it either because they're often nose blind to whatever is in their house, right? Themselves. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's good to bring in, um, I like to bring in Fran because she has a, a really sensitive nose or someone like my mom who uh, has a really sensitive nose and uh, they can generally like lead me down the right path because, you know, to just, um, I, I don't like using air fresheners. I'm allergic to them myself and a lot of other people are as well. 
And usually if you just shove a whole bunch of air fresheners, people are like, what are they trying to mask? So I'd rather figure out what the actual smell is and deal with that smell. What is the cause? Let's figure it out. So do we need to, um, you know, do we let the dogs on the furniture? I do. So I'm sure like I probably need to have my, my couch and chairs um, shampooed before showings to help mm -hmm. remove that smell, get, take the dog beds out of the house, um, that kind of stuff. Right. So there can be things from feedback. If we get the feedback <laughs> um, that can help us make it um, more saleable. And often there's a lot of times we don't get any feedback at all. And, uh, and, and I don't like to expect to get feedback because I do find like, a lot of realtors aren't uh, that uh, forthcoming with it. So I like to make sure my buyers know that, or sorry, my sellers know that so that they're not waiting for feedback and, you know, hinging on hearing how every showing is going because chances are, we're not going to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. What other points do we have to, to talk about? I think that's all of them. I want to go back to possibly move out because we didn't talk about that one very, <laughs> very long. And, um, and I feel like it, it deserves a little bit more uh, mention than what we talked about. Um, I always find if it's possible to move out during that, that, uh, you know, especially if you have an offer date, I'll say for that week of showings till your offer date, it can be so much less stressful to be moved out. And even if you're living with your in-laws, which I realize can be incredibly stressful <laughs> for a lot of people, um, it, it just, you're not constantly cleaning your house. You're not constantly having to bring pets back in and out of the house. You're not constantly having to uh, go over that checklist and make sure everything's perfect. You know, after the kids have been using the bathroom and had bath time and had, uh, you know, had their crayons all over their floors and right. Like it's, there can be, it can be so stressful getting ready, especially if we get a, a last minute showing. I mean, I do like to put in a minimum time frame for showings when I have my a family living in a house, but if they've moved out, it's so much easier to accommodate last minute showing someone's driving down the street. They're showing the one down there. They hadn't noticed your house come up yet. All of a sudden they can add yours on just like that in a few minutes, mm -hmm. right? So it just makes it, yeah, easier for that. Um, but but that doesn't mean that it has to be that way. If you have to stay in the house and we have to have a minimum time frame for showings and uh, we can accommodate that as well. And we just have to ask those people, I'm sorry, you'll have to book for another day, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes it gives, it gives the potential buyers a little bit more freedom in a sense and then you just can get a lot more eyes on it and yeah. appeal to more people with exactly. if there's no one in the house if no one's in the house it is. and then you, you think about special times of year as well coming up next month you know there's christmas you have the potential to host a lot of christmas parties or office parties or whatnot and to try and host these parties at your at the place that you're selling and then clean up and get it ready for showings and everything. It should, it's a lot of work more yeah, so that time than any other time. Christmas, you should be trying not to be the host of, of all kinds of events. That would be the smart decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It can be hard though. Cause I mean, sometimes the right host that you want to buy comes up and you've already planned your kid's 10th birthday party, uh, which is going to be at your house. So we can block that whole time frame out on touch base so that realtors can't request that time frame. So it is good to have that conversation before we list your house. And, um, and that way we know like, okay, what we can and can't do for showings. Um, and then we can work around that. And another way to, reduce the amount of showings that you're going to get, which I mean, we, we often want to increase that, but, but still get the people through is to have an open house, right? So if we have an open house, you know, Sunday one to four or something, that's going to reduce the private showings leading up to the open house. So then you're, you're going to be like, why is there no showings on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? Uh, or there's only like five <laughs> or whatever during a peak season. Well, because a lot of people are going to wait and come to that open house. So yeah, it doesn't always work. Like I do find like during cabin season, people are like, 
they still want to get in before the weekend so that they can go to the cabin on the weekend. <laughs> but, uh, so, those, so those weekday showings would, would suit them better than yeah, having exactly. open house on the weekends. Yeah, if you do that open house on the weekend, you will get less showings. It might not reduce all of them, but you will get less. So if you are staying in the house, that is really important to, to have that time frame that you can be out of the house on the Sunday afternoon and get a whole bunch more in. Mm -hmm. And for us as realtors, we want to be as accommodating as possible for our clients. Yes. So it's a very important conversation for us to have and make sure that their needs are being met just as much as we are able to, to help them achieve their goals. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. I think we hit a, hit it all right. Yeah, I, I, I agree. With me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I think we went through a variety of great points there and, Hopefully someone takes these and makes good use out of them. Perfect. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to see more great tips from the Boschman team, hit like and share.